When I'm looking for a suspension leak, I have this tool. Inside, headphones, sound clamps, and a switcher. Works pretty good. You clamp the sound clamps on the suspension that you suspect, route the wire to your switcher, and you can toggle in between each sound clamp. The loudest clamp is most likely your noise. But sometimes more than one clamp can sound similar. So what if there was a way that you could visually see what you're hearing? Well, you can using an oscilloscope. Let me show you. We're working on a 2003 Mercedes S-Class, mint condition with only one problem, squeak. So we've isolated this squeak to this side of the vehicle. And because I can reproduce the squeak with my hands, we don't have to take it for a test drive, but you can do this while driving as well. So let me show you how I have it hooked up. Underneath the vehicle, I have one hooked to the sway bar link, one hooked to the sway bar, one to the lower ball joint, and one to the tie rod. Then all my cables just plug into the back of the scope. Now this can work on any scope, not just the one I have, and it can work on any vehicle. All right, we've got the software running. Now, depending on your scope, your software layout might look different. What we're interested in is this box here. All our signals are zeroed out. Let's go ahead and hit start. And that is our noise visually. So let's zoom in and see what we got. So you can see our blue trace here, that has the highest amplitude. That's our loudest noise. And then the green and the red are kind of similar, and then the yellow is the least. Let me turn these off. You see our yellow is the least, so we can rule out the yellow as being our noise. Red and green are kind of similar, so we might move those around to a different spot close to their location, get another reading, but blue definitely is the loudest. So blue is hooked up to our number four slot in the back. We'll see what color that is. That is white. There's a white little tag on it, and then there's white tape on the other end. So let's go find our white and see what that's hooked up to. So right here is our white connected to our lower ball joint. That was our loudest. There was a little noise coming from our tie rod and a little noise coming from our sway bar link, but the least was coming from our sway bar. So right here, our sway bar bushings, those tend to squeak sometimes when they dry out. We can rule that out because our sway bar isn't making much noise, but our link has a little noise on it. Our tie rod and the loudest is our ball joint. So what do all those have in common? They're connected to our steering knuckle. So if the noise is causing a vibration down one of these metal components, they can reverberate through the steering knuckle and make the noise spread out to other components. So let me move these around. I'm gonna leave that one there and move these other three to different locations and see if our lower ball joint is still the loudest or if there's something else. All right, we got them moved around. That far one is on our upper control arm. That'll let us know if the squeak is coming from our upper ball joint. We have this one on our strut tower. There's a little joint at the bottom of our strut tower on this vehicle. So we're gonna see if that's our issue. We still have the ball joint there. And then this one is on our control arm near the bushing. Now let's go back and see if anything is louder than our ball joint. I'm gonna hit play. All right, let's make some noise. Okay, so you can see now our red, before the blue was the most, now our red is the most. Let's turn off our yellow, turn off our red. You can see how small the blue is now. And then the green we can rule out completely. The blue we can rule out. That red is a lot more than the others. And then our yellow is, is still quite a bit less. So our red, if we look in the back, our red is trace number two, which is green. It's this green one here. So now let's go under, see what green is hooked up to. So green is hooked up to our strut. Right here, there's a little joint that our strut is attached to. So this joint right here looks like it's making most of our noise. The other one that's connected to our control arm is this one here. It doesn't have any color on it, so that's just black. So let's see what color this is at the scope. So in the back of the scope, black here is trace number one. And when you look, trace number one is yellow, which makes sense. So our lower control arm, anything connected to our lower control arm is making the majority of our noise, because that's where the strut is connected to. All right, I think we got our noise pinpointed. On this particular setup, the strut tower is connected to a little bracket. That metal bracket at the bottom has a ball joint that connects to your lower control arm, allowing that strut to flex. That ball joint is what's making our noise. Unfortunately, you can't replace that ball joint by itself. The whole lower control arm has to be replaced. So let's do that real quick, and we'll make sure that noise is gone. With the control arm removed, check out our noise. And unfortunately, there's no way to remove it. You have to replace the whole control arm. All right, all back together, moment of truth. Now my battery died on my other camera, but that's okay, that is the completion. So we used an oscilloscope to visually see what we heard, helping us pinpoint the cause of the noise. 
It's a pretty slick method. It's not new technology, but it is pretty cool technology. And this will work on any scope. It's best to have at least two channels, so a two channel scope, so you can compare at least two different clamps with each other. If you'd like to see the repair of this 2003 Mercedes, click on this video here where we replace the lower control arm in detail. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.